Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build and it's been a while since I've done anything music so I bring you the Grand Piano. Now this does not look like a particularly complicated build but it is two sheets so I'm not real sure and how many times have I speculated and just been off base. Let's open this up, see what's inside, start putting it together and see just how much of a challenge it's going to be. Silver Edition Grand Piano. Inside we have two sheets, just like it says on the package, some rather large parts, and I almost couldn't see the instructions. They were nice and white and camouflaged. These are the longer, taller, older style, but in white. And as usual, Metal Earth. 3D laser cut model at the top, the 360 view, the website or web address to get there, QR code, which one of these days I'm actually going to try, I'm pretty sure that takes you to their website, and then line drawn of the piano, the little bit telling you about insertion tabs, insertion holes and fold lines, so you know what they are, giving one of the pieces as an example, probably piece 12. Needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly. The legend with the blue circle indicating at a connection that you should insert the tab and fold it over 9 degrees or bend it. The green triangle, insert the tab and twist it 9 degrees. And a little note, if you pull and screw or pull and twist, it makes for a tighter tab, tighter connection. And then we have the metal sheets. This is a line drawing of the metal sheets with the parts numbered so that you can find them and put it together. This is an older style so there's no color coordination. Probably not a lot of duplicate parts. It seems like there's several eights but they're numbered. So this won't be difficult. It's not like a tank with a bunch of similar round wheels. Over here is the top of the next section. Start the assembly flowchart. Part one, fold that. Part two, fold that. Put them together. And you have these little part three, four little sort of sub assemblies showing you how to fold it and add it on part five and six. Add those together, flip down to the or slide down to the bottom half, and in this quarter, you pick up a seven, eight, nine, just follow the arrows, the sub assemblies, put things together over here to this quarter, pick up a 15, 16, and 17, just keep following the arrows. Is there a back? I don't think there's a back, no. So, yes, once you get down to the bottom of this front page, you are finished. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers, useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat, sort of curved end, great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models, and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. I don't use these very often but they sometimes come in quite handy. They're angled needle nose pliers and I typically use them for one of two reasons. Either getting into a strange shaped area to twist a tab because of the angle more frequently though, I use them to fold over flaps along bases or side of parts that are too long for the flat nose pliers, but needle nose pliers can't get to them safely without bending or warping something else. These will grab a longer area and bend it over. Taking a quick peek at the instructions, this doesn't look like a complicated kit though. There does look to be really delicate parts that could bend the wrong way, but I've got my sheets and some tools to get me started. Let's make a piano. Thank you. 
This piece that covers the keys was tough to bend all the way over. I thought maybe I was doing it wrong at first, but I guess it's just because it's such a long piece that I'm trying to bending and bending it all the way over. You will want to hold parts straight with tweezers or pliers on the side of the bends as you bend things over. The metal is so thin it could fold and bend the wrong way and warp things. You definitely want to hold part six firmly as you bend over the flaps with tabs to keep it from warping. I realized that these curved parts on the legs are a little too long for the space. I'm guessing the idea is the end sits behind the longer side flaps on the legs. I started tucking the ends behind the flaps. On the later legs, I shaped the folded curved parts first, and then the long flaps, folding them in, holding those pieces down. It was at this point I realized I had missed one small, somewhat vague, important detail in the directions, and I folded part 7 the wrong way, and now the tabs will not line up on the bottom of the piano. I did not check the position of the tabs in the directions before starting to fold things.
For these pieces, I bent the center fold just a little and then the outer folds a full 90 degrees. That way, all I had to do to finish it was pinch the two sides together, folding it into a square shape.
This took some fiddling to get right. Ultimately, I bent the lower tab inward a little more than 90 degrees and the upper tab in opposite direction, again more than 90 degrees, and hooked the tab into the top of the part of the piano, then pulled and hooked the lower tab in place. The tension is holding it in place. One good fall, however, and it might pop off. My plan for shaping the legs to the stool didn't quite go as planned. And I present the Grand Piano. Nice looking little guy. This is one more to my instrument collection. That leaves one left and I'll have the complete set. It was not difficult to build. It's almost a quick build. It's kind of on the borderline between me making a quick build video and making a full video. So I'm going with full video. It took about an hour, give or take, to put together. It wasn't a difficult build. It's got nice detail, especially the inside looks really cool. I was afraid that was going to be more complicated because I thought all the little wires were going to be one sheet and it's just kind of the framework raised. So it's not difficult. You have to pay attention, as I commented earlier, to the way the leg, the back section, leg folds. And it's just really easy to not realize those tabs are in a specific location and not notice the way it folds and as many models as I build they're not always accurate in the way they fold it so it was an easy thing to miss and I had to go back and fix it fortunately the parts were so thick it wasn't something that was going to break probably the most difficult part was this tiny little stool because well I guess I guess kind of tried to bend it the wrong way trying to be more careful and it just it didn't work out like I expected and now the legs are not quite right but close but the piano looks fine. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.